Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Joining us today for her spiritual enlightenment, we have Sister Basma Abdul Qadr, who is an Islamic educator with not one but two degrees in Islamic law. She is a mental health counselor and psychotherapist, and she's the founder of Sila Institute for Islamic Mental Wellbeing. Welcome, Sister Basma. We're so pleased to have you join us today. Thank you very much. Alhamdulillah. So we had uh, the Ali family on the program um, earlier, and I was just blown away by the family with this, how supportive they are with each other and how much love it just oozes out of them for each other as well. Mm -hmm. um, today, we would like to talk to you about families with special needs children. Um, and I myself, I know a few families that have special needs children and I just find them to be so extraordinary and just amazing. I'm sure in your line of work, you've come across a lot of families with special needs children. Do you yourself see any similarities between these families? First of all, Alhamdulillah, Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'hdihu wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyiyati a'malina. Man yahdihillahu falamudilla lah, wa man yudlil falahadiyalah, wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah, wa ahdahu la sharika lah, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. Jazakallah khair, Sister Amira, for inviting me to speak about this very important topic. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless and benefit from whatever that we're going to discuss. Well, regarding the question, any similarities between families gifted with special needs uh, that I have seen. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I've seen many clients uh, from a Muslim, Muslim community. Mm -hmm. And they all share one thing, uh, how much they are compassionate, how much rahma and compassion in their hearts. And also they share very significant uh, uh, trait, all of them. They value the test. They value their children. They look at themselves as they are gifted. Wow. So that's from what I have seen that's from the, the believers and the, the Muslim community. That's and amazing. it's really interesting. Also, um, the level of energy, a physical mm -hmm. energy, uh, emotional energy. Uh, they are so special. Allahumma barik. It's as if, uh, or as we know, it's I find like Allah SWT has specifically chosen these people to have this test. Because exactly. if they were, you know, it was for someone else, they might not cope with that. And I, I just remember one of my clients, and may Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala reward her greatly. Uh, she came to the sessions mm -hmm. for uh, just to learn some coping skills and and to talk about mm -hmm. her uh, child. Yeah. And subhanAllah, amazingly, that she couldn't feel any sadness. And she said, I just want to check, is this normal? SubhanAllah. I feel happy. That's beautiful. I don't feel sad. And is it normal? And subhanAllah, how faith can change um, how a human being should behave in a certain uh, situation. Wow. That's really amazing. Mm. Well, um, Studies have shown that parents with children with special needs are reluctant to actually seek the help and the diagnosis initially. And we've heard from a few families where they say that there's a sense of shame before they get the diagnosis um, surrounding their children's conditions. Mm. Uh, have you yourself come across families feeling this way? Well, if you want to talk about this um, test, this yes. hardship, yes. Uh, you have to look at it as a loss. It's a loss of a dream for the parent. Right. Uh, it's a physical loss as well. And also a loss of self-image. So people, they vary in their responses. Mm -hmm. Of course, at the beginning of the hardship or the calamity, it's going to be so different than uh, going through the stages. Every single stage of this hardship yes. has its own challenges. So when, when we are talking about, you, you specifically uh, spoke about shame or mm -hmm. the feeling of uh, being ashamed. Yes, it's a common feeling that yes. uh, many parents and carers of special needs uh, children, they feel this way because, you know, the physical 
appearance will attract people attention yeah and then they have it all the time in the back of their heads that I want to protect this child and also uh, this child is related to the person so it's part of the self-image mm -hmm. so th the brain is always in this uh, state of alert that they are ready for uh, protection mm -hmm. they That's are right. in this uh, you can say fight or flight mode right so this is something common in in many families parents and carers of special needs uh, mm -hmm. children um, the feeling of uh, the shame. Uh, I can also um, refer it to the community or the people around those carers and the culture. they contributed yes. in this uh, feeling of shame, mm -hmm. which we actually we are trying today, inshallah, to educate people about this, right, yeah. Islamically and psychologically, and how much stress that they. Um, intentionally intentionally or unintentionally they put the parents uh, in subhanallah yeah yeah and what type of challenges have you come across or what do you see these families are facing well there are many challenges um, first of the challenges uh, is the grief feeling uh, they actually um, struggle in accepting uh, the situation and as I mentioned every stage has its uh, its own features mm -hmm. the beginning of this hardship is different than the middle if you um, maybe you're working with the special needs children and you know uh, how many uh, appointments that the parents they have to attend um, the, the many opinions and ideas about how to take care of this uh, and of you course don't know which one to, yeah of course we're, we're not now um, our session is not um, talking about one uh, disability we are talking about different disabilities but um, um, the many ideas and many opinions that they hear, the feeling of guilt, the feeling of not um, not feeling enough or not good enough as a parent, as a parent, right. it's always there. Uh, also, the um, the isolation from the community that they suffer from uh, when, for example, they uh, they feel that because of the disability of their children, they cannot attend certain social uh, event or um, because of the, the situation of that, their yes. child, they cannot be in uh, different gatherings. Um, another struggle when they are 24 seven occupied to take care of their children and there isn't enough time for themselves no for respite the self -care. for self-care yes also the feeling of guilt towards other members of the family other children uh, their husbands uh, their careers mm -hmm. so if you look at uh, the mind of the parent with a special need uh, child or a carer um, it is a roller coaster a roller coaster and of course, uh, this person, uh, if uh, the, I'm talking about he or she, mm -hmm. if they don't acknowledge and accept all these emotions that they experience, they are going to struggle and crumble, mm. most likely. Their energy level. They have to check their energy level because um, they are most likely to to, to be drained. Well, that's that's where it would lead to. Mm. If there's no respite and there's no self-care, it can only go on for so long. Yeah, and that's, uh, subhanAllah, a recent study that uh, I've just um, seen, uh, that the level of stress of the parent with a special need is equivalent to a stress of a soldier in the battlefield. SubhanAllah. The level of the stress that we're talking about the physical, mm -hmm. mental, emotional stress. So subhanAllah, so th these parents and these carers, um, they should uh, get a lot of support from the wider social circle. Mm -hmm. So, And that's why we need to raise uh, this issue and uh, ask other people, uh, other family members around them to try to 
share with them the azure and the reward. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Mm -hmm. What reminders can we give to these families to help overcome the the feelings of shame or any other negative feelings that they may have, whether starting out on the diagnosis or further on in the journey? Mm. Subhanallah, this is so important as, as we started talking about how faith can help and finding a meaning behind the hardship. That's always in the mind of the human being. Mm -hmm. Why this happened to me? That question comes in the beginning of this trial. Yes. And it will continue to come even if the person is not aware and mindful of the question. Of course, people will look at it as um, it's a shaitan. Well, yes, the shaitan can take advantage, but we need to understand also that the mind of the human being was created to ask about reasons. Right. So that's part of us, yes. part of our nature. And amazingly, if you look at um, one of the hadith, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam, and he displayed in front of him all of his offspring, and part of his offspring, those with special needs. SubhanAllah. And the same question came to the head of Adam alayhi salam. And he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he told him, Oh Allah, um, wasn't it possible to make them all equal and to make them all healthy? So that question, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he told us about, he informed us through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that this conversation happened before the creation. Wow. And Allah told him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, I wanted to be thanked. I wanted to be thanked. And if you look at the answer, Allah wants to be thanked more. So uh, if he would create all human beings healthy, without any disabilities, where is the feeling of gratitude? SubhanAllah. How the feeling of gratitude will, will come to us. And also those families that they have uh, children with disability, how constant they are in thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They feel the gift. They feel that they are blessed. Uh, another thing that we mentioned and, and uh, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu mentioned that the people, people with sicknesses, people with disabilities will come on the day of judgment and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask them to get up to be admitted to Jannah before other people. And they will be honored in a different way than any other human being. So to the limit, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu mentioned that, to the limit that they will wish their hardship uh, would be more. So this mother, this carer that will come on the Day of Judgment and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will honor her in front of all people and will cause her to, to go to Jannah. She will wish that her son or her daughter suffered more than uh, the level of uh, calamity or suffer that, suffering that he or she experienced. Looking at this picture, a whole picture, Amira, is very helpful for the carers Definitely. and the parents. Yes. A concept, a concept of Ibtila. What's the concept of Ibtila? We are here on planet Earth to be purified. We are here on planet Earth, a, a very temporary journey. Mm -hmm. And Allah constantly, He described it as Lab. Lab. Innama al hayatu dunya lahwan wa lab. It's a game. If you look at the description of the Quran, it's a game mm -hmm. and it's a temporary game and nothing around you is real. SubhanAllah. Everything is an illusion. Time is an illusion and your test is an illusion as well.
that's why Allah said in the Quran, ما أصاب من مصيبة في الأرض ولا في أنفسكم إلا في كتاب من قبل أن نبرأها. So any calamity, any hardship that will happen on planet Earth, mm -hmm. in yourselves or in things around you, Allah has written in a book before He created heavens and earth. Why? And he mentioned the reason. لكي لا تأسوا على ما فاتكم ولا تفرحوا بما آتاكم. So you do not feel sad and you do not grieve over something that you have lost mm -hmm. and you do not overreact with uh, happiness and, uh, and joy over something that you have given because it's not real. It's a role that you play. It's it's a game. Subhanallah. And then soon you will come to see that it wasn't real. Because after all, we are going to to be judged on the day of judgment. Definitely. Yes. And to see what exactly we have done. And how we reacted. And how and handled we handled our tests. We we react. And w were we patient? And patience. The Iman is half of it, sabr, patience, mm -hmm. and the other half is shukr, gratitude. And we are in a constant uh, action of either sabr or shukr. The, the, the mu'min the state, it's always sabr or shukr. Whenever you are tested with calamity, you, your action should be patience. Definitely. And whenever there is a um, a joy, a blessing, then you are grateful. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. Words of wisdom. Thank you so much for joining us today. InshaAllah, we have uh, educated the community a little bit yeah, on families with special needs. May Allah it was a pleasure having you here. Jazakallah. Jazakallah. Pleasure to meet you. You too. Thank you for joining us today.